Welcome back everybody. Today we're gonna to do something really cool. We're gonna show you guys how to make a fire brick rocket stove the good way. Gonna throw in a couple extra modern day tips. If you all enjoy learning all these tips, be sure to start off the video with a like. Let's get started on teaching you guys another amazing survival tip. Let's go. So easy, we can do it. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna need is 21 fire bricks. You can get these things at Home Depot for super cheap right now. Don't go to the garden center and get them because they come a little bit more decorative. You gotta go to the building supply stuff. It's, it is seriously a difference of like dollars. Uh, I picked these guys up for half a buck a piece. But if you get the wrong ones, you could be spending two to three, four dollars. Okay, so I don't know what the kids are doing, but right here, this is just a paver. Pick up a paver or a big uh, 18 by 18, 16 by 16 inch tile and that'll work just the same. The next thing you wanna do is find some wire, some mesh wire. This happens to be metal lap. You can find scraps of this on job sites. You can pick it up at Home Depot. Uh, a lot of rock masons use this stuff. What you wanna do, any kind of wire, you, you could even use chicken wire. You wanna cut about a square out the size of that paver. Okay, so there we go, we got a square piece. You can also use, you know, if you've got some something like this laying around. The main thing is, is you wanna make it big enough to where all the bricks are gonna sit completely on it. Okay, so it's ideal and you don't need to, but if you can take one brick and score it in the center on both sides, you can pop that brick in half. All I did is took the screw and just carve it. It's as easy as that. Then you wanna take Take another brick right here, then take a hammer and just pop it. We had to bring out a little bit of light. I wanted to do this in the dark because it feels cold out here. I thought the fire would look cool. So you want to do your first hole, your whole perimeter at first. Okay. Go around the bottom, just like this. Take one of your halves, put it back here. This minute. Later. Jeez, this took a long time. Okay, then take your metal and <clears throat> put it right down there. Go all the way around. Put your little half block on the opposite side. Hey. Make sure you keep it nice and tight. Okay, so now what we've done, we've created a spot to put your dry sticks and wood on top, and then you're gonna have a draft that's able to come underneath. Now we're going to just simply stack these all the way around. <laughs> Keep going around in the circle. Now put that one across here. Like that. See how you cross the line? Now go this way, that way, that way. Just keep following the circle. Nope, nope, nope. See, that one's the same. See, that one's the same. So you gotta, come here. You gotta cross the line. Now you go keep going. Look at that. These young boys are learning a super good skill. And even they can do it. That's all the bricks we have. Look, Dad, we built it. Okay, so now we've built this thing. Now it's time to put in a little bit of fire. Uh, got some cardboard. Light that. When you're first starting it, just go ahead and drop it right down the middle. You can take kindling, drop it right down the middle. Make sure all this is nice and tight. If you're in a survival situation, just go find dry twigs. It can be dry grass, it can be pine needles, dry pine needles, and just little tiny stuff. That's all it takes. And then you just slide it right in. Oh. <laughs> 
And as it burns, you can just continue sliding this stuff in, even if it's sticking out. You can see that thing is just cooking. Okay, so now for the top, you can do a few different things. Okay, so you guys can get a different kind of brick. Uh, you get the cinder block brick. You can save a few cents on them. Here was the price difference when I was looking at them. Not much difference. These red bricks are quite a bit better. I mean, we're talking, that thing is a serious oven right now, holding some serious heat. So why would you wanna know how to do this? It's simple. Emergency situations, uh, you can take this thing camping with you, throw 21 bricks in the back of your car, and you've got a sweet little oven rocket stove in your, in your trunk for camping. I mean, you don't need much. You just need some sticks, some kindling, and you stack it together and you're cooking like a champ. Or what if there is an emergency and you wanna ration your propane or your gas powered stove? Can You know that you can go to Home Depot, buy some bricks for 40 some cents, stack some bricks around your house or out by the garage or somewhere and know that you've got a stove that you can assemble really, really fast outside that is super effective. Just, just doing it makes you feel like a super big success. So let's say power does go out. You're a couple days in and you're like, shoot, I'm using up all my propane. I don't need to use my propane. I can go out and build this rocket stove and know that it cooks super efficient and save my propane. Making a rocket stove is just it, to me, it's an incredible thing to know how to do. If you actually do it yourself, go grab some bricks. You will feel like a champ building this out in your yard. Do some cooking on it. You will have a very valuable skill set for any kind of emergency or just having fun in the backyard or taking it camping with you. But knowing how to build this kind of stuff Having these survival skills, I think is very, very important. And now I'm teaching it to the kids. They're gonna know how to make this thing. It can serve a lot of purposes. I mean, look at that thing. It's amazing. Okay, so it's been about five minutes and look at that, boiling like crazy. Super effective. So here's another tip, take another brick or this happens to be like a little piece of slate, broken slate. If you've got that fire just cooking and you wanna slow down that flame. So to minimize that flame, just slide something over in front of it to minimize that air that's coming through and it's gonna dampen down that flame for a little bit slower cooking and a little bit slower burning. Here's another bonus. This day and age, guess what's coming back? Cast iron pans, cast iron pots. Do yourself a favor and pick up some cast iron. You can find it just about anywhere now. Walmart has a huge selection of cast iron. Who would have thought? As your stuff from the kitchen might work great, being under direct fire is gonna probably wear those things out pretty quick. But if you have cast iron, they're gonna last you a very long time. So you might be asking, why is this rocket stove better? Well, by taking it five layers high, it creates a better draft draw through the top, you don't, get, you don't get the smoke coming out down here. It pulls it right up that chimney and really channels that heat. And by adding that screen right there, it gives all your material a spot to rest on. And having something that comes across the front, it could be a brick, it could be a piece of tile, anything that doesn't burn, shutting down that draw in the combustion chamber, allowing that heat to really hold in there and cook like an oven. That way, if you catch a fish, Throw that fish right in there and it's cooking already. And don't forget to throw your Johnnies in your bug out bag. I hope y'all enjoyed learning how to make that improved rocket stove. If you found value in this video, please hit the like button, 
comment down below. Let me know if this is the first time you've seen this, if you've built one before or have something else that works really great. Also, if you wouldn't mind, comment where you live in the world, state, country. Love seeing where people are coming in from. Subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. We've got lots more tips coming. Have a wonderful week.